We are back Tuesday night, Red Hook, Brooklyn, Function House, DJ Wanda. Welcome to the show, man. What's up, man? Thank you guys for having me, man. It's a big operation you have going here. I didn't know this was located in Brooklyn. It's like top secret uh, warehouse. Yeah. This is Nobody has ever definitely seen top secret. Yeah. He's need even got the, the earpiece in. It's like need the code word to get <laughs> in here. Don't try to get in here, folks. <laughs> have to be invited. Got the, we close the curtain. Are you familiar with Red Hook? Ikea, that's about it. That's all I know from Red Hook. So many DJs only know Ikea and Red Hook. It's crazy. That's where you, do, well, because everybody buys the same standard table to put their DJ set up in the <laughs> living room, right? Yeah, mine was from Elizabeth, New Jersey, <laughs> Ikea, but I heard there's a nice one out here, too, guys. Yeah, no, it's, pretty, yeah, it's, it's right pretty big, the one that's over here. Right down the road. And you can take the ferry there from Manhattan. It's, it's cool. Yeah. All right. Well, Ikea talk. Enough with Function. Ikea. <laughs> so you got a lot going on. Yeah, man. Why don't you tell us where you're from and how you got into the business? Okay, so I am uh, originally from Delaware. Georgetown, Delaware is where I was born. My parents still live in Delaware, Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. I don't know if anybody's ever been down there. It's close to Ocean City, Maryland. You got a couple of LLCs uh, in Delaware. Yeah. That's right. That's everybody goes to <laughs> incorporate. What, yeah. That's what you, that's, it's known for tax-free shopping and business incorporation in very small state. So uh, I... Went to college in Long Island at Hofstra University. I went. I wanted to go to NYU for film production. That's what I wanted to go to school for. I didn't have a film reel, so I didn't get into NYU. Was, nobody gets into NYU film school, but it's all good. And then, uh, so the next best thing was Hofstra University. Ended up in Long Island. Um, when my friends and I would go into the city, uh, we would end up driving to Astoria, Queens, and taking the train into the city. So as soon as I finished school, I ended up moving to Astoria in Queens, and that's where I'm at now. And if I got off of film production, I didn't like doing that because I had to work with too many people. I ended up doing audio production, ended up working in radio. My first internship was Hot 97, and that's how I got into radio. And it's been ever since. That's what's up. So you, did you, when you were in Hofstra, were you DJing in Hofstra? Yeah, I was doing, um, since my freshman year, actually, we were, WRHU was the radio station there. And it was like, run like a professional station. That's what kind of like turned me on to it. And it was just a hobby. Like, it, I wasn't getting credit for it or anything else like that, but... I decided to end up doing a double major after uh, I started getting more involved with the station. So, yeah. How'd you get into the DJ roots, though? Um, I don't know, man, honestly, because my parents, I'm an only child. Um, my parents did not listen to music like that. My father listens to straight talk radio. My mother listens to some, like, pop stuff I can remember when I was a kid. And then mostly, like, country uh, ever since probably, like, middle school, just country music. Um and they never had like music lying around the house or anything like that. So it was basically I had to discover everything myself. And uh, I started, our high school actually had techniques and some old crates with like UTFO records and stuff like that from like 86 that somebody had left there. I was able to go through those and uh, put together the turntables. They had a mixer as well. And then I started messing with that every day at like lunch. And then I been, ended up doing our uh, high school basketball games. I was the first person to do that. And from there, just kept DJing. Wow. So, so you were like 15, 16 you started? Uh, yeah, messing around. Yeah. Y yeah. So the high school had turntables. That's actually pretty cool. Yeah, it was, it was a nice AV department, I guess, for such a small town. Yeah, there's, there's actually, I heard of the John Dewey High School has a DJ set up. Yeah. I guess they're doing that. Well, what was crazy, when I went to high school, I went to a high school called Murrow, and they were known for like, um, like communications, like, they had like actually film studios in the school, and they would do like broadcasting and stuff like that. But what I what I was DJing at the time, obviously. But what I didn't know, like then, what I knew now is they had a full MIDI recording studio, and people actually there was a class you could take to do like dance recording, and I didn't even know this. I found this out like towards the end of my last year of school that they had that, where you can actually make music digitally. It was and this was like the beginning stages of like computers with the plugins and all that other stuff, yeah. but. Pretty cool. I would have died for that. That's all I wanted to do in, in high school was like I was always driven to like beats and stuff. So I make pause tapes and everything. And then uh, when I had my first mixer was like uh, I think it was a Gemini with like a five second sampler on it or whatever. You're aging yourself. You're dating yourself. Well, right I now. don't care. Whatever, <laughs> folks. <laughs> Take it or leave it, baby. I've been around for a while. So uh, yeah, that's, that's all I would do. Skin in the game. Yeah, man. That's all I wanted to do is if, if I had access to like a keyboard with like a sampler or mpc back then i would have gone crazy i can imagine now kids they have like apps on their phone and they can do sample things and do whatever they want so that's nuts so hofstra you gravitated towards there because of their music their radio station well it was for film production but ended up getting into uh, djing through their radio station it was, yeah it was so then dope. after after hofstra 
walk me through it. What happened? What, you remember, how'd you get into the clubs? Who were the promoters? Okay, so I never, I didn't want to be like a club DJ at all, pretty much. So I, my goal was straight radio. So, like I said, I ended up at Hot 97 as an intern, and I, that was like on a whim too. It was just like I hired you at Hot 97. Um, I was actually under the program director Tracy Clarity, who basically started the format of Hot 97 from the dance station that it was to the hip hop station. So I was very lucky to work under her. Uh, Reggie Hawkins also was my uh, boss through up to Sirius. He was also my boss at Sirius as well. Um, so they hired, I was the programming department intern, um, stayed there until my internship was up. I ended up working part-time there doing call-out research. So I'll be the dude that would call your house. I don't... And they don't do this anymore, but guess what, folks? They used to call your house and say, hey, would you listen to a couple songs and say whether you like it or not? And then you would push on your phone, do that you like you? this song or not? Yeah, that was me. And I had a fake name so nobody could stalk me or anything like that. And then we'll call everybody's house and annoy people. Actually, no bullshit, though. I remember getting phone calls like that from radio stations. I'm serious. I would have done it. If, I, if somebody had called me when I was a kid, I would have loved it. Please, I wanted to do oh, it. Yeah, I would have also. Yeah. I remember that, I yeah. Yeah, but mo trust me, most people in this area did not want to did not want to hear that. So that's what I started doing part time after that, just to stay in the building, pretty much. And that's the whole point, folks. Is you gotta stay in the daggone building because everybody starts, and if they don't get what they want, they bounce. So that's the problem yeah. today, right? Oh, especially instant now, instant gratification, people. Want. Instant gratification, man. Um, from there, I started with. Do you guys remember Star and Buck Wild, the morning yeah. show? So yeah. I started as an intern there, and I'll, just like an assistant. Um, when Sergeant Reginald Hawkins, who was a character on the show and also my boss, when he ended up leaving, I ended up taking over running the board for that show for a while. And then I stayed there doing most of the morning shows after that. Um, Sway, who I work with now, did a, like a, a short-lived time there. Uh, Joe Budden, they had him there for a couple months doing a radio show. Uh, Miss Jones eventually ended up coming on there and doing the morning show. And then that was my last one I worked with at Hot 97. So um, you must have been rubbing elbows with everybody. Show had everybody come yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, and that was at the time, um, I don't know if most people know that, like, uh, the radio station Hot 97 was pretty much the only thing in town when it came to hip hop. Or yep. This was before Power 105. There was, it, there was a station called Jamming 105, which eventually turned into Power 105. Yep. And, uh, but Hot 97 was it. If any, any artist that wanted to have any hip hop record played, you had to do summer jams, you had to do all this stuff, or you're getting blackballed, you, you know what I mean? Had extreme power. So imagine being in a station like that at that time where. Everybody has to come through there. So me, who never coming from Delaware, never meet, never met anybody. Like I get to meet my heroes within like the first couple months. That um, like just including the DJs himself, like Mr. C, Flex, everybody. You know what I mean? People that I that's that's all I did was watch uh, VHS tapes of Funk Master Flex on MTV New Year's Eve, and I would just you know they give you about 10 seconds before they go to commercial. I would rewind those 10 seconds and just watch what he's doing and stuff. He was cutting up Firm Biz Remix. That's all I remember. So they used, they used to bust your chops because you were from Delaware. They bust my chops because I'm a white a white man in, in Hot 97, which is not <laughs> <laughs> which is not like uh, crazy now. There's a bunch of white people in hip hop, I guess, but that's where actually I got my name from. When I when I originally started, it was DJ Delaware, like W H E R E. That uh -huh. was in college, pretty corny name, but that's what happens in college. Uh, when I went to Hot 97, I became DJ Wonder because I was like, call me Wonder Bread, and that's where <laughs> that came from. Yeah. So, yeah, but Makes sense. Yeah, Mr. C w w was completely dope. He he uh was very like he showed me the ropes on everything. E all the DJs, man. They're Camillo, Camillo was the first person I ever talked to when I was back in Delaware on a uh, email. There was a program called 88 Hip Hop, which was online, one of the first streaming like uh hip hop shows. And he would he emailed me about stuff. So, yeah, all those dudes were dope. It was a great experience, for real. So, you left Hot 97 and you went over to Sirius. Yeah, because at Hot, I was doing the morning show as an assistant, right? I wasn't getting salary or anything like that. My my real job with 9 to 5 was I was working in the sales department at KISS FM, which was another station attached to Hot 97. Um, and so I, how did, what did that entail? Well, basically it entailed me getting up at like 4 in the morning to go do the morning show. Once that's over at 10, 10 a.m., I, I was supposed to be there at 9, but they gave me a special exception. And then I went over there at 10 a.m., started answering phones for all these sales people who would uh, – you know, get the ads basically that you hear on the radio station. So I'm like you selling ad space. Me personally, no. I was just taking care of all of the administrative duties, aka a glorified secretary, folks. <laughs> uh, and yeah, uh, put in that work. Yeah, man. Falling asleep by 3 p.m. at my desk, and then 
drinking like some energy drink and then waking back up and then finishing that and I don't end until maybe like six or seven at night and then it started all over again. So it was and that time was five days a week. Oh, for sure. And then whatever else, I, I, I worked street team and stuff on the weekends for them. Like pretty much anything I could do just to stay there. I was very excited back then. I don't know what happened to me. I lost all my excitement. <laughs> but uh, so it was time. Paid your dues. I had to, man. Uh, but it was time to move on and I had an opportunity to go to Sirius and get a salary doing just something creative like radio. So that's what I was expecting. What are you doing right now at Sirius? Um, I'm the executive producer and also DJ for Sway in the Morning, which is the morning show on Shade 45, which is Eminem's channel uh, on Sirius XM channel 45. So what does executive producer mean? Like, so what are you, what are you actually doing? I get yelled at if anything goes wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, now, now it's, I'm in a great uh, space because I work with a lot of people who uh, help me out with some of the administrative stuff, like the paperwork and like getting talent releases signed and all this other stuff, which I used to have to do all by myself. Okay. But now I basically show up, um, just plan what the show is, make sure um, everybody has prep for like all the hosts have prep for all the guests that are coming in. Yep. And uh, I get the DJ. That's my favorite part, obviously. But um, and then afterwards, I just do a little bit of paperwork, and then I have meetings with bosses, and that's about it. And I'm that show, Sway in the Morning, is that's a pretty, pretty big, popular show. Yeah, I'd say um, definitely top hip hop show in the world, basically, because most pe most of the hip hop stations they can only broadcast to the uh, U.S. So yeah, and there's a ton of yeah. people that are coming through that show. Yeah. Yeah, it's and dope. Like big, you know, like you, they had, um, you know, Clive Davis has been on that show. Mm -hmm. um, Jimmy Iovine, Jimmy Clive Iovine, Davis, yeah. uh, Timberland, uh, Quincy Jones. We've had Justin Timberlake. We've had all pretty much anybody you could. So who was the one guest that you rubbed shoulders with that uh, you'd say, like, you got a little starstruck? It's only happened a couple times because at this point I'm like, man, all right, let me just I'm get sure out of here. Happened, <laughs> oh, yeah, for, happen now. for sure. But, I mean, well, back at Hot, I met James Brown, and then I also met him again at Sirius XM, and uh, that was awesome. Anita Baker is my favorite singer of all time. I got to see her. Bill Cosby, my favorite. That's my, that's my TV father growing up. I got to see him. Um, yeah, man, basically people that who – really influenced my life I've gotten I've got to meet and I'm very appreciative of that yeah wow so you're over the you're over the starstruck I'm, I'm, I'm assuming right oh yeah I mean I still like to see people I, I mean I still kind of like more so on the street if I see like a celebrity on the street I still get that kind of like hey oh I know that person but yeah. when I see him every day walking in it's more like yo that's work to do and it kind of like uh, so all who's right somebody you haven't had on the show that maybe you'd want to get on this particular show, we haven't had Drake yet. I've had him on one of the other shows I've done on SiriusXM, but we haven't had Drake. Um, I don't think Jay-Z has come up yet, or, or Beyonce. Um, everybody else has pretty much come on already. But So how many years have you been on Sirius now? Oh, my gosh, man. This is 2004 was when I started. So what is this, 13 years? Wow. Yeah, 13 years. And that and so and when you started, I mean, that the Sirius was not what it is today. I mean, they have... Yeah, this is before we have Howard Stern now. This is before Howard Stern that I started there. Yeah. Um, and have you ever met him? Oh yeah, we were. I was on his show actually. It was interesting experience, man. It was cool. Um, but yeah, it's definitely grown. We were competing. Sirius was competing with XM. They ended up merging. Yeah. So it's uh, yeah, it's a lot bigger than it was when I first started. Yeah. So what are the views a show like that gets? Like. Well, what are the numbers like on, a, on Sway in the Morning? They don't really tell us individual numbers because they want everybody to just be creative and not be tied down to ratings and everything else. You start doing that, people start trying to do stuff to get ratings and everything else. So we have, uh, I believe it's like 32 million subscribers, ends up being like 64 million listeners at any given time because two people listen to every subscription pretty much. Yep. Um, but how we really gauge it is... Um, through Sway's Universe, which is the YouTube channel that um, we post all of our interviews on after, and they get between like five hundred thousand and a million views. Like if it's I know a, I go to yeah. I go to that once in a while, and I, I I watch a couple of those shows for sure. So being the creative guy you are, you're starting your own show. <laughs> it's called Terrible. <laughs> yeah, this is just something fun I do on uh, Instagram. My Instagram is at DJ Wonder. Um, I usually post it in my Instagram stories every week on Thursday. So this Thursday I'll have a new one up. Um, you can also check it on djwonder.com slash terrible and on Sway's Universe slash terrible. And um, it's, I don't know if you guys are, were aware that the, a new TRL started on MTV. They, re, they revamped TRL. Yeah, yeah, I saw that, yeah. So 
I was a little upset by that when it when it first uh, came out. So I decided to do my own thing, and it's basically just like a just a joke take off of a TRL. So cool. That's what I'm working on now. Just something fun. What do you get to play uh, musically uh, when you're DJing on the show in the in the morning? Now it's pretty much anything I want. I mean, Shade 45 is a straight like hip hop station, man. Like ev- there's multiple hip hop stations on Sirius XM, and they try to individualize themselves. So Shade 45 is like rugged, like underground, like throwbacks and current, like you know, just like bangers. You know what I'm saying? So, but my mix, I've had the liberty of being able to play all kinds of stuff. So it goes everywhere. I play TV themes. I play soft rock sometimes. You know what I mean? So it depends what I feel like that day. Do you get any bookings from being on the show? Like other people hitting you up that want to DJ like nightlife? Yes, mostly not in New York City. Like everywhere else and everywhere I go, like people know, I like I never think about that or whatever, but people like know me pretty much every because we do a lot of live broadcasts in other cities as well. We go everywhere for like Super Bowl or any event we go out there. But in New York, man, it's like, nah, I just still doing I'm just like playing parties with my friends and stuff here. But it's, it's a lot different out of state. Yeah. Anybody wants to book me? Hey, at DJ Wonder, hit me up. <laughs> what's uh, what's that animal status all about? So animal status was, uh, and we're gonna roll some picks while you. Okay, about cool. It. Animal status currently is a is a radio show. It originally started as a DJ duo between myself and uh, DJ DB. Um, and animal status origin the name originates originates from us like walling out. We used to have a residency at like Hudson Hotel, and this fool would like take his shirt off halfway through the night. We, it was just crazy time. So that's where animal status came from. So from there, it's just kind of become a brand and that's my radio show, which is at uh, 10 p.m. on Wednesday nights on uh, Shade 45. That's dope. Did you prepare something for the function house? Oh yeah, man, I guess we're gonna be all over the place. So I'm definitely gonna play some stuff nobody has ever played at the function house before. That's good, man, that's, yeah. that's, what, we, uh, that's what we welcome. All right, cool. Well, thanks for coming down, bro. Thanks for we'll having take me, a two man. two minute break. I'm gonna get Wonder up on the 1200s. Peace. Peace.